After our brief stay in Merida, Harper and I headed to Cancun. I'd never been, and Harper and I were excited to see the beach. If there's one thing I've learned about solo travel with a little one, it's don't overcomplicate things. Our flight was out of Cancun, so I booked us a hotel for two nights so we could play on the beach for a bit before going back to Guanajuato. I booked an all-inclusive resort, and it was my first time ever doing that. But another thing I've learned about solo travel with kids is that figuring out food is one of the times most likely to go completely wrong. So the easier you can make that, the better your life will be. I gotta say, on this side of that experience, it's probably not something I'll do again. The food was just okay, and I feel like I probably paid twice what I should have. But you guys, let me tell you that it's impossible to be unhappy when you're looking at this view. Look at that water. I could not believe it was real and not photoshopped. The water was so clear and so blue and just, just look at it. It's funny because I pride myself on not falling for the tourist traps. I grew up an hour away from Disney. I wasn't one of those tourists. And when I started traveling, I never wanted to go to the places full of tourists. I sought out locals only experiences. I wanted to eat at the restaurants where the locals ate. I wanted to see the things that the locals saw. I wasn't one of those people who went to Cancun and never left the all-inclusive resort. And then I was one of those people. Maybe it's because I live in Mexico and I don't feel like I have to prove anything to anyone. And some of the experience was underwhelming and weird, like when the drunk man at the pool kept yelling, Armageddon, over and over again. It wasn't my favorite experience ever. And I knew that a taxi right away and I could find amazing Mexican food. But see solo parenting travel tip number one, don't overcomplicate things. And here's the thing, what I realized while sitting on the beach, looking out at the pelicans diving for fish, is that sometimes the touristy places are popular for a reason. So the resort was a bust, but this view, I get why people stood on this beach however long ago and thought, yeah, people are going to love this. Just because something is popular doesn't mean it isn't also amazing. I was also super excited to meet my online friends, Rachel and Daniel, in real life too. Rachel and Daniel moved to Cancun from the States and I found out about them on YouTube. And I've been religiously watching their channel since then. They came out and hung out at the beach with Harper and me for a bit one evening. And I don't like to film the first time I meet someone. So I asked them if they'd Skype with me once we got back to Guanajuato. Because guys, if you're not already following them, you're going to just love them. They are fabulous. Okay, roll tape. So, hey guys. Hey. Hey, Aaron. How are you? Get that little thing. I'm good. How are you? Good. Doing all right. How is Cancun? How is the weather? Weather is great today, actually. There's blue skies out. There's no rain. So The first time it hasn't been raining and flooding in like three days. Yeah. <laughs> it was dreary for a while. Oh, man. Do you want to tell everybody, like, who you are and how did you come to live in Cancun? Because I totally love your story. Um, <laughs> I think it's so cool. Thanks. Yeah. So we we call ourselves the Weekday Warriors. <laughs> I'm Rachel. This is Daniel, and uh, we're a married couple from the U.S. that lived in Denver previously, and we. Decided to move to Mexico like a year and a half ago because, and we've only been here, what, six, months, six months since yes. July. Um, but we were just kind of tired of the corporate life in Denver and it was very stressful. We 
basically just felt like we were never seeing each other because we yeah so we would each get in the car for an hour on the way to work we both had offices without windows in them like i worked in the basement <laughs> and then I worked in a closet. And she worked in a, basically a broom closet, very Harry Potter esque. Yeah. And then we drove home an hour each way to get back to our house. So we felt like there's probably a little bit more to life to be enjoyed. Yeah. We were literally living for the weekend. So yeah. we wanted, <laughs> we knew there had to be a way that we could enjoy everyday life and actually pursue things that we're passionate about instead of just like work in the grind in the corporate world. So we were looking at where could we move to that would allow us to uh, live more affordably and um, still not be too far away from the US in case we need to go back for any reason to see family. And initially we were looking at Thailand. Which is the opposite. <laughs> I mean, that's way the way. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just because of the affordability. But then we realized that like, oh, there's Mexico right next door and it's, uh, it's got a great climate, it is cheaper than the U.S., and we've always wanted to learn Spanish, so we're like, why not Mexico? <laughs> yeah, Spanish is going to be an invaluable skill in the U.S., I believe. Definitely. A lot of bilingual people there. Yeah. yeah. So that's how we ended up in Mexico. <laughs> that's how we decided, yeah. And so now that you're now that you've been here for six months, and you guys have your residency, too. You have your temporary residency and all that, so you are, like, official. We are. We, yeah, we decided to go the temporary residency route because uh, there's a lot of benefits to being a resident. So, like, one of the big ones we were, like, worried about is health care. more affordable to get, like, the national health insurance, and then also we get a lot of, I guess, discounts for being residents, too. Yeah, being in a tourist state, yeah. in a tourist city. <laughs> Everything is you marked get, up, so now that we're a resident... You get, like, 50% off on excursions. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> so there's a lot of benefits to it. And then we don't have to worry about leaving every six months, too, because the tourist visa is only good for 180 days. Right, right, exactly. If we ever wanted to pursue permanent residency, getting the temporary residency is easier, and you can do that for, I believe, four terms. Yeah, you can renew it for four years and then um, renew it, to, I guess, switch to a permanent It's residency. easier to get your permanent residency after that if you've been a temporary resident. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a pathway. Yeah, it's a pathway, too. Sure. Oh, I love it. So cool. So now that you've been here for six months and your residents, um, like what is your what are your top three favorite things about living in Mexico? Because it seems like we all, not we all, but so many of us, we come here because of the cost of living, but then we end up falling in love with so many other things that like, you know cost of living kind of like goes down on the list um like what's your what's your like top three cost of living was the first one that brought that us here brought us here but what I, is keeping us to stay here yeah i don't think i've met a mean person yet everyone's been very welcoming yeah. it's just like a culture of acceptance it feels like here yeah I where everybody's happy to share their experience and their culture with you yeah, I think like the second we said that we were moving to Mexico, we just got like a flood of messages like, welcome to Mexico. Like, we're so happy to share our country with you. And it just, I don't know, it just like filled us with so much love. And I, it's been an, an amazing experience, just like how welcoming everyone's been. Um, second one. Eternal summer. I mean, you can't beat eternal summer. <laughs> That's true. At least having, in Cancun. <laughs> yeah. And having the beach just right next door to you. Yeah. Um, we never worry about water. Oh my gosh, like I could not believe it. I, I, can't, I still can't believe it. I was just watching the footage and finalizing the edit and I'm like, how, I still don't believe, it really looks like, like, like I've photoshopped it. Like, <laughs> like I've played yeah. with the saturation or something, but it's really that blue. It's crazy. It is. I don't know how it can be that blue, but it's magical. It's so gorgeous, so. We definitely feel lucky that we can live oh, yeah. right next to it. I always want to live next to the ocean now. Yeah. I guess if I was in the mountains like you are, I would feel it was okay, but I do love the ocean plays too. back. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody loves the food here, and so do I. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, yes. tacos, tamales, and Pizzoli. then tazole, and chilaquiles, because if it's socially acceptable to eat chips for breakfast, you know, I <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
In the U.S., we're sold the propaganda that cha champions eat Wheaties, but champions eat nachos for breakfast. That's a fact. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And you guys are, you're vegan. I always get this wrong. Are you vegetarian or vegan or you're, you're I'm sorry. And now I'm making you, like, define yourself. I'm, I'm making you label yourself on the Internet. <laughs> you're, 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 you, you, you're friends with vegetables. Yeah, we love vegetables. Actually, we hate vegetables, and that's why we eat them. <laughs> oh, that's right. Vegetables. Down with the vegetables. <laughs> um, yeah, we eat a mostly whole food, plant-based diet. <laughs> so we try to avoid all meats and cheese, dairy, eggs. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and you are able to do that in Mexico, and that's not a problem, and you haven't, you know... You're not just eating rice for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, you're fine. You're okay. Yes. <laughs> if we go out to eat, everyone understands that we don't want dairy or we don't want meat. I mean, people are flexible if you're... Yeah, it's easy to food. say, like, when you order something like sin leche or, you know, like, sin carne, sin crema. So there's ways to order without... Uh, or to like adjust your order to make sure it doesn't have those things in it. But then we're lucky we're in Cancun where there are actually so many restaurants that cater to vegans and vegetarians. So it's yeah. fairly easy for us to find stuff. There's five, there's probably like five really good restaurants we can go to if we ever want to go out to eat. Oh. Yeah. I mean, we can't typically have a lot of the street food, most like street tacos are meat, but at a restaurant we can usually find something. Mm -hmm. That's so good. It seems to vary. I get this question a lot, and and I always say like you got to ask the weekday warriors, or you got to ask Jim and Mai from Spanish and Go, <laughs> like people who are actually vegan. Um, but it seems it seems like it varies depending on where you are. Like I know I've heard Mexico City has yeah, there's like 30 million people there. They have a little bit of everything yeah. up there. Yeah, exactly. But there seems to be kind of. Uh, you know, a lot of people are concerned about, like, it, will vegans and vegetarians be able to, you know, find stuff that's going to fit with them? And have you and you guys seem to have found that people are pretty accommodating, like, in restaurants, even if it's not a vegan restaurant, like, they're they're okay Absolutely. to... Because I know sometimes in the U.S., like, we're a little bit twitchy about changing things in restaurants. <laughs> like, sometimes you can get a little bit of a, you know, like, an attitude about that. But so is it is it different here? I, uh, I haven't received an attitude yet. I, we did get one waiter. We were in Campeche, actually, and we were getting maraches without good. meat, and he just looked confused. He, and he, he, said, he said he couldn't do it, or he had to ask somebody. Yeah. Like, what do they want? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's not a meal without meat. <laughs> yeah. Really accommodated not, us. Not attitude. I mean, one time, not attitude, just confusion. One time in Denver, I ordered a salmon salad without the salmon, and <laughs> the waitress did give me attitude. She's like, here's your salmon salad without the salmon. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I feel like that's the kind of thing I would be so surprised if that happened in Mexico. Maybe it, maybe it happens you know, maybe it happens and we don't know enough Spanish to know when it happens, but I haven't felt any of that, like, like sn snobbishness yeah. about things right. here. Like, people just seem really, really accommodating and, like you were saying, like, so friendly and welcoming. Yeah. And this, this also ties into your business, Rachel, right? Because you, like, part of the move was to start this, this business. So, talk about that, because I'm like, you're, I'm mm -hmm. like, now I'm following and I've been going through your Instagram and like liking all the posts. <laughs> yeah, so a big part of moving was so that I could start my own business doing health coaching. I'm very passionate about um, eating healthier and like sharing the health benefits of a plant-based diet. And so with health coaching, um, I've been focusing on my Instagram and it's at health my lifestyle health is my lifestyle <laughs> and it focuses on the like tips and nutrition facts and I also like share recipes on there too so there's uh, daily posts on that and then um, for the actual health coaching part I'm creating a course that's kind of like a 30-day challenge where um, it's 
geared toward anybody who's interested in either transitioning to a plant-based diet or just wants to learn how to eat more nutritious meals and just tips and tricks on how to make their food um, more nutritious and delicious without over-consuming calories. So I'm hoping to have that roll out within the next few months, but all of that information will be announced on my Instagram. Um, and I have a blog too that I share occasionally on. I need to like revamp that, but there's a blog of the same name, um, healthmylifestyle.com. So yeah, I'm really excited that moving to Mexico has allowed me to actually pursue this passion. It's opened up opportunities. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so cool, so cool. I love it. I'm getting like, all kinds of inspired from your from your Instagram page. Yay! I'm glad to hear it. Instagram page for your travels in Mexico, right? Yeah. The yeah, we have um, that dot weekday dot warriors on Instagram, um, where we share a little bit of our travels and some some stuff in Cancun too. I guess whenever we find a good photo, we try to share it. Yeah, <laughs> we probably don't share as much. We have a whole bunch that we're meaning to share. It's just sitting in our devices, not shared yeah. yet. So we need to be better. We're not the best Instagrammers, but we try no. to be maybe more active on YouTube, I guess. <laughs> Sharing <laughs> life in Cancun and some of our travels yeah. on there. Yeah, I love it. I love it. What I love about your channel is that um, I always feel like you're just talking with your friends. Like, like you're just like taking us along. I feel like I'm actually going on your travels with you and you're so funny like yeah. the last one with all the alien stuff like <laughs> <laughs> really, like laughing out loud not oh, just from the it's, it's just so funny it's just like you're so personal i never feel like you know you're trying to sell me on anything or you're trying to make something out to be like i don't know you're just you're so genuine which oh, is thank you. that's exactly my channel <laughs> That's how I feel about yours too. Like we're just along with you with whatever you're up to that day or your travels. <laughs> <laughs> well, one day we have to like actually travel together sometime. Yes, yes. we should. Be fun. Yay. Um, well, I know you guys have work to do, so I will let you go. <laughs> but I will put all of your all of your web thingies in the description box below so people can find you on Instagram, your YouTube, and all of the health coaching stuff, which is super fabulous. So, yes. all right, guys. Well, thank Good. you. Thank you for your time, Erin. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, Say hi to Harper for us. I will. <laughs> I will. See you later. Bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs>